About a month ago, I released a video titled Seven Tanks You Should Consider Grinding in World of Tanks. And boy, you guys seem to really just jump on that video. Not only did a ton of you guys watch it, it seemed like a bunch of you really, really enjoyed it. So because of this, we're doing part two, but this time, tanks that you should avoid. The first tank on the list is the AMX 30B, the French tier 10 non auto loading medium tank. Now, if you are a veteran of this game, this is of no surprise to you. If you're new to the game and you're wondering why this is, here is why. Update 4.6 came out about a year and a month ago, and what they did to the tank was reduced its penetration from 260 to 248. They reduced its premium pen from 330 to 300. They reduced its accuracy from 0.3 to 0.32. They reduced its aim time from, I'm not exactly sure what the aim time was before, but it's all the way up to 2 seconds, which isn't bad, but it was better. And they also touched its APCR shell velocity, which is now insanely low, like a thousand meters a second or 1,100 instead of its almost 1,500 meters shell velocity. That is now gone. Another thing that makes this tank pretty bad and unbearable to grind is the tier 9. The tier 9 is, well, nerfed in the same way, pretty much to the point of no return. It's garbage. And what made this tank decent to begin with and already almost not a good tank but still slightly decent was it was a direct competitor to the leopard one the slight differences between this and the leopard one were at the point where it was a toss-up between if whether or not players like the leopard one better or the 30b better the 30b seemed to have better on the move gun handling and also accelerated slightly faster however the leopard one had better gun depression better rate of fire and also it had better penetration now with the nerfs to this tank and the buffs to the Leopard, gun handling buffs to the Leopard, there's almost no reason to play this tank because now the Leopard has, I believe, better gun handling on the move, if not slightly worse. And it just has much better rounds, it has better accuracy, better penetration, better shell velocity, and still the better gun depression. There's almost no reason to play the 30B anymore, other than the fact that maybe you still like the tank. But if you're new to the game or you're deciding what tank line to go up, I implore you to instead Go for the Leopard 1 instead of the 30B if you are even considering going for the AMX 30B. Staying with the French tanks, the next tank on the list is the AMX M4 54MLE Tier 10 French Super Heavy. Why is this tank not recommended by the clone guy? Okay, tell us clone guy, why, why do you recommend this? Well, because when it was introduced onto PC, it had... A pretty decent rate of fire. It was still worse than the Americans with the 120 millimeters, and it was still worse than the British with the 120 millimeters. But this tank had armor going for it. When it came out on console, they just nerfed the guns even more. The DPM on these guns is so bad, very, very bad indeed. The armor is still really, really good. It really is, and if you decide to use the bigger gun on these tanks, it does have a bigger gun with higher alpha, the rate of fire is nerfed even more. And you'd probably be better off just playing the Panzerkampfwagen 7, their tier 10 German heavy tank. Well, there's three of them, but the one, the Panzer 7 one, the one that the Panzerkampfwagen 7, that one. Alright, it's on screen now, you know what it looks like. And uh, plus this entire line is not very good either. The tier 7, which you had to grind through if you're going for the 50B as well, is pr pretty garbage. Probably one of the worst tier 7 heavy tanks. I would even argue the, uh, what's that thing called, the Black Prince is better. So I, I would say that as well. And then the tier 8 has no armor, and it's garbage. And the tier 9 does have armor, but it's still kind of garbage. In fact, the tier 9 might even be better tier for tier than this thing. But then you get to tier 10, and you feel like you're playing the same tank, but you're a whole tier higher. At least, that's my take on the vehicle. Maybe you like it, and a lot of these tanks you may enjoy, but for me, I would stay away from them. The next tank on the list is going to make me cry because I love it, but I cannot recommend it. It is the IS-4, the Russian tier 10 heavy tank, the IS-4, with a really impressive amount of hit points at 2,500, but its upper plate is just... Outclass nowadays as you see the Skoda one shell into the upper plate two shells in the upper plate And he must have fired the other one He just easily put two shells into the upper plate of this player in his IS-4 Why don't you recommend this tank? What's so bad about it? Well, it used to not be bad. No, 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 it didn't get nerfed per se stat wise, but with the introduction of all these new tanks high pen tanks 
and all these other things, the tank is kind of outclassed. Its gun handling is awful. The IS-7 with the bigger gun has better gun handling. The rate of fire is awful. A lot of tanks with bigger guns have better rate of fires, like the WZ-111 5A, for instance, has a better rate of fire, and it has a bigger gun. And as you can see, tanks are just penetrating this vehicle. Its armor is thick on the side. It's got really good side armor, so you really have to over-angle. But then they start going through your drive wheel, they start going through one of your other angled plates. It's just at pretty much every angle this tank can be defeated. And its gun just isn't doesn't aim fast enough. If the, if the gun could aim a lot faster, then this tank might be a lot better because then you don't have to show your armor as much to poke out and shoot because the ability to poke out and shoot with this tank makes the armor work really, really well because of how awkwardly shaped it is. But the fact that you have to sit there and aim, the enemy team is going to aim before you. And that's, that's, not, that's not a good thing right there. And that's a reason why I would not recommend this tank. Another reason is a lot of people do not like the KV-4 at tier 8, do not like the KV-3 at tier 7, so it's kind of a painful grind. It's also a very expensive grind. The gun packages, the turret packages, the engine packages are all insanely expensive. It's going to be a long, painful grind and probably won't be worth it in the end. You may love the STI, but then once you get to tier 10, it might be a letdown for you. Next is the K91, staying with the Russians yet again like we did with the French. We're now on to Russian medium tanks, the K91, and there are multiple reasons why I do not recommend this tank to grind. Um, you could, Like I said, you can still grind these tanks. Some of you may even like these tanks, but these are of course mostly just my opinion. And the K91 is no exception. On PC, the K91 has best in class DPM. And for the Russian mediums, it had best in class camo rating, and it also had really good gun handling. When they decided to release it onto World of Tanks console, aka Mercenaries, they took the features that defined the tank and they removed them. They took its best in class DPM and completely butchered it. It now has the worst rate of fire of any 100mm at tier 10 for the Russians. And they also nerfed its camo rating, the Object 430U, the alternate tier 10 medium tank that leads off the same branch, actually has better camo rating, and that's the one I would recommend if you go down this line. Now, that's not the only reason I would not recommend this tank, it's also the grind. The grind is very painful for newer players. If you're an experienced player, you might be fine with it. However, you have tanks like the A44, which is a challenge, and I hated grinding through that, plus I was still kind of a scrub when I ground through it, hence why I don't think I really liked it. Then the Object 416 was also a challenge to play, because you kind of have to have tank destroyer skills when you go to play that tank. It has no armor, it has no gun depression, and it does not even have a fully traversable turret, and that can be a challenge for some players, especially if you think you're a medium tank. Well, you're not. And then the tier 9. The tier 9 is actually pretty good. The Object 430 version 2. That's actually a really good tank, because you can play it just like the Object 416, but now you have armor and, like, one more degree of gun depression, but that really doesn't mean anything. So that's pretty nice indeed. But the other two tanks, as I mentioned, the A44 and the Object 416, just aren't, well, a pleasure to play, should I say. And yes, a lot of tanks you're grinding for aren't going to be a pleasure to play, especially grinding through the lower tiers and so on and so forth, but they should still at least have something going for them, something that will teach you how to play the next tank. And the 416 has really good camo rating, and it's going to teach you that you can be invisible, but then you get to the K91, and it's like, oh, where'd your camo rating go? Ha ha ha. And it's gone. The next tank should not be surprised if you've watched the channel at all, if you've played the game at all, or if you've done any reading at all. This tank, the E50M, was already considered a quote-unquote a weak tank. A lot of people considered it a weak tank. It was all over the place. Even Quickie Baby has had videos, or at least a video titled Weak Tank, on his channel regarding the E50M. And, uh, well, what do you do when you call a tank weak? You nerf it. That's at least what Wargaming did, a tank which I already probably would have had on this list even if they did not nerf the tank. Why? Because tanks like the FV4202 and the Object 430U have pretty much the same roles as this tank, but they just do it better, having, you know, the better armor than the other medium tanks and having 
good guns, rate of fires, accurate guns. Obviously the 430U doesn't have the accurate gun, but it still performs the role of a heavy medium tank much better than this tank. In fact, it performs the role of a heavy tank much better than a lot of heavy tanks. So because of that alone, this tank, I would not recommend. However, things have changed. The DPM of this tank got nerfed and the tier nine, which you have to grind through, got butchered. It's aim time got nerfed, it's DPM got nerfed, and now it's just like, ugh. Why play the E50M? Why play the E50? Why grind the line? The tier 8 is amazing. The Panther 2 got some really good buffs. The Panther is a really good tank. And it's just like, why would they buff those tanks? But heavy nerf the tier 9 and 10. I don't know why. But anyway, maybe some of you like the tank. Maybe some of you don't. I don't know. Next on the list is the Chinese 121, and we're going to talk about the grind first. The grind is awful. You have one of the worst grinds in this game. You have all these weird Chinese medium tanks with really bad guns and no armor and uh, have no gun depression. And they really don't shine in any singular way because you can just go play the Russians, which are better in every single way. In fact, you can play the lower tier Russians and still be better than the Chinese ones. And that's the grind at least in regards to how good the tanks are. But then you have the packages. You have some of the most expensive packages in this game. The tier nine WZ-120 has insanely expensive packages that you have to grind and the tank isn't even that good. Then finally, once you have all the packages ground, you've researched the 121 and you go and you pick up your 121, you suddenly realize that the tank is not actually that great. The one object 430U is better than this tank in pretty much every single way. It's got, okay, the 430U has a worse rate of fire and worse gun handling, but it has the armor to make up for it because now you can get close and you just kill things, you can bounce shots, you can laugh at everyone, and you can win almost every single game because the tank is blatantly overpowered. But then you have tanks like the 113, which are, well, I would also not recommend you get, but when we're comparing it to this tank, it's a very good competitor to this tank. But it's better. My 113 is better gun depression, better armor, better survivability, better health. It's just a better tank to pick up. And gun depression, ladies and gentlemen, you have 3.5 degrees of gun depression on this tank. 3.5 on the 121. That makes it very difficult to even go over bumps. Bumps will throw your gun way off and you will be missing your shots. You will be unable to shoot the enemy. You will get outclassed by every single Soviet medium tank, which this tank is supposed to have the same role as, just with a bigger gun. It's now, there's no reason for it because the 430U comes out, or should I say came out, and it has, guess what, a bigger gun than the other Russian medium tanks. And so it fills that role even better. So, do I recommend this tank? Absolutely not. Last but not least, actually it might be least, who knows, depending where you come from, on the list is the Progetto 65 Tier 10 Italian Auto Reloading Medium Tank. What makes the tank so bad? Well, there's multiple reasons. First off, it got its DPM reduced by, listen closely kids, 27%. Not 5%, not 10%, 27%. Hmm, we don't want this tank to be overpowered. What do we do about it? I know, let's nerf it by 27%. I can't emphasize that enough. It's garbage, the DPM. Now, a lot of people like the tank, all right? I, I can't say, oh, people don't like the tank. People don't like this tank. Um, well, I can't say that people don't like this tank, but a lot of people do like it. I will, I will give it that. There are a lot of players who enjoy this tank, but I was talking to one just yesterday Maybe it was two days ago, I don't know. And uh, he was telling me that um, he likes his Progetto. But he admitted it was awful. It's an awful vehicle. And that's not the only thing that makes it bad, is the reduced DPM. The other thing that makes this tank bad, or at least this line bad, this grind bad, is the grind itself. The tanks, all the Italian tanks, got nerfed. Um, maybe not the super low tiers, but the tier 5, tier 6, tier 7, tier 8, tier 9. They all got nerfed, and so you're just playing in subpar tanks throughout this entire grind, and it's just painful. It's painful. I got up to tier 6, and it is not a pleasantry, let me tell you that. It just, it makes you want to go grind like a 1-2-1 or something like that. That's just how bad it is. And it's just, ugh. Tank is bad, line is bad. It's not a pleasure to play, you're not going to have fun, you're not going to really learn much. You're going to get outclassed. Anyone playing in a medium tank, any 
tier 10 medium tank is going to, if they have the same skill level as you, outplay you. And you're just putting yourself at a disadvantage playing this tank. Because you have a 27% disadvantage. That's just how it works. Somebody with the same skill goes, oh hi, we have the same skill level. Or even slightly lower skill level than you. Is going to kill you. They're going to outplay you. They're going to have a bigger influence on their team. Because they're in a better vehicle than you. Simple as that. I mean, they may make a dumb decision from time to time. And you'll be like, hey, see that super unicorn? I just outperformed him this game. Well, he might have made a bad decision. Somebody might have been where he wasn't expecting. That's how the game rolls. But most of the time, if you're playing against players who are as good or better than you, they're going to be outplaying you. That's just how it works when you're in a tank that has a 27% disadvantage. And that is why I cannot recommend this tank. Well guys, that is it. I almost added the Object 277 to this list, but I did not. There was not room for an 8th tank, so this is not on the list. Plus, the grind to the tank is actually really, really enjoyable. You've got the IS, you have the IS-3, you have the T-10. It's a really, really enjoyable line, alright? and It's an enjoyable line. And then some of you may actually like the Tier 7, so I can't say this is a tank you shouldn't grind for, just because of the line itself. That's going to be the video you may be asking yourself, Clone, why are there no tank destroyers? Why are there no light tanks? Those are for another video. We're going to have another video of tanks that you should grind, but instead it's going to feature tank destroyers and light tanks, and then we're going to do the same thing with tanks you should not grind, and yet again it's going to feature tank destroyers and light tanks. So these two videos that we just did focused on heavy tanks and medium tanks, the main damage dealers of the game anywho's i hope you guys all enjoyed if you did slap that like button comment subscribe let me know what you think of these tanks do you enjoy some of these tanks let me know do you completely regret grinding some of these tanks let me know and are you going to take any of these tanks into consideration to not grind let me know in the comments below i want to know was this video useful for you for you does this video remind you of regrets you've made let me know in the comments below and i will see you guys all later thank you guys so much for tuning in take care everyone Peace out.